for another episode of Out of the Draglands, where we review every episode of Into the Draglands that is airing now on Work.com's YouTube channel. I'm Rosalia Valentine. And I'm Yaya the Artist. And we're here reviewing episode four of Into the Draglands, all fired up. Woohoo! And so this episode is not necessarily a dance challenge, but kind of a dance challenge. It's one where we are told by Deja Sky and Helen Heels that the criteria that needs to be met is to kind of fit that 90s Euro house look and do a song off the All Fired Up soundtrack, which is a compilation of really big 90s hits that you would hear in the club and give us high energy for this challenge in your performance. Mm -hmm. Another thing they were looking for was a club inspired look whether it was like a raver look or a nightclub look or a club kid look and yeah i mean before we get into the episode i do want to preface by saying i think this is a challenge that really kicked a lot of our asses and it's apparent when we get into the episode because this is the first episode that we see the judges really starting to kind of go in on the critiques yeah but that being said, we'll go ahead and just jump right into the episode. And the first performer is none other than yours truly, Rosalia Valentine, doing Nobody's Supposed to Be Here by Deborah Cox. Yes. I loved the look here, obviously. I <laughs> commissioned it from Deja Sky, and you ended up wearing it for this episode. Um, I thought you did really well. I thought it was high energy and pretty much met all the criteria of the challenge. Um, at the end, the judges give you the critique that you were kind of teeter-tottering between the lines of being serious about the number and being campy with the number. And I agree with that critique. Um, and I think that uh, ends up applying to a lot of what we see in this episode mm -hmm. is, yeah. you know, people kind of struggling to it, fully give it a campy performance, but don't have necessarily the dance chops to give it a serious performance um so i think that was kind of a big challenge for everybody and you were the first one to kind of get that critique yeah so. and what's funny about this look is yes it's a a yaya look that i wore but i actually was not planning on wearing this this was a last minute change up um the route that I wanted to take with this performance was doing it in like a really nice like country gown and kind of just like performing it like that old school early 2010s type of drag. Like if you go on Mickey's WeHo and pull up like any video from back in that time, you'll see so many drag performers doing this song in just like a like a drag gown and just kind of doing like the standing and performing. That's the route I wanted to take with it. But then the night before, I just knew that the look wasn't going to meet the criteria. And I was really in my well, head no, about it. I'm, I'm the one that told you not to do that because you already had it packed and ready to go. And I was like, I, it was not packed. It was, I was we about looking, to pack it. We were looking, I was about to pack okay, it. Okay, whatever. It was not packed. Whatever. Hung but up yeah. on the technicality. <laughs> anyway, the night before we went to go filming, um, Rosalia had this like gown picked out and we were reading over the criteria for all the challenges and I told her the criteria for this is to give a nineties club kid look. And I don't <laughs> recall seeing them wearing black gowns and yeah. chicken feathers. So yeah. So Yaya really came in clutch Which on this I one. Regret. Cause then you beat me. Well, spoiler alert. We're not there yet. We'll get there. But I like this, um, this economy that we're seeing about Yaya's generosity, you know, uh, she gave Rose those pearls on vintage. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. She gave Rose those pearls on uh, on vintage and sent her home. And then she gave me her Deja Sky look, and I won this challenge. So, yeah, 
Thank you, Yaya. Um, the performance itself, I kind of had a hard time watching it. I just, I, I, I obviously don't dance. I'm not a dancer. So seeing me try to do some steps was just hard for me to watch. So I didn't necessarily have a good time watching it, but. I didn't think it was that bad. I really yeah. did not. I didn't think uh, and I, and again, I like that the judges are like starting to go in with the critiques. They straight up said, you're not a dancer girl, but I mean, you brought the energy, you brought the look and the song was good and we want to see you do it in the future, which I was over the moon up because this is the challenge that I was really scared that I wasn't going to do too well on and possibly end in the bottom. So I was happy with my performance and the critique. Yeah, it was good. Then we move on to the next performer of the evening, Miss Claire Doe. Um, yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about it earlier, you know, Believe by Cher is, it's is big one. shoes to fill. It's perhaps one of the most iconic songs from the 90s, one of the most iconic songs of Cher's career. Mm-hmm. And to me, that song is very euphoric and otherworldly. And Claire kind of came out in a cute look, but oh. a very wrong look for the song it was giving very like 70s abba like if she came out and did dancing queen or something like that i i I would have totally loved the vibe but i mean i want to see drama and just absolute massive faggotry for believe by Cher, and i was not served that Mm. um and then Katana pointed out in the live chat during the premiere that Claire was like touching the hair a lot. And that was all I could notice. She did it in her confessional and she did it in the performance. So I don't know if that was like a nervous thing or what, but I wrote down it's giving Marsha Brady. Oh, wow. <laughs> you didn't say that earlier, but I totally it's, see yeah. it. Yeah. Wait, wait. Are you saying Marsha? Or, no, you mean Marcia. Jan. No, because Jan's the one with the oh okay the yeah, curly, yeah yeah no, okay sorry I wasn't Marsh sure. is the one with the straight blonde. yeah you're right yeah. you're right um, I had the same sentiments you know this song we all we all knew the playlist of the songs that we were able to choose from and I saw this on the catalog and I said not that one because I I knew that was going to be a difficult one I mean I definitely considered doing that one because I, I did not absolutely adore that song but it's one of those songs where you the look has to be epic. Um, and you know the performance isn't bad it's a little different from what we've seen from Claire so I'll give her I'll I'll applaud her for like trying to go out of her comfort zone to try to meet this challenge this challenge was hard for a lot of people Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing that did kind of tickle me was at the beginning of this number when she comes out on stage and she goes to the back bar and she's like slapping her butt but it kind of looks like she's fanning a fart <laughs> she probably was oh my god it kind of it tickled me because i was like oh that's that's kind of setting the <laughs> the tone for yeah, this number and again with the critique that you got it's teeter-tottering that line of campy and serious and if you're gonna i mean i can't really imagine going campy with believe by share which i think mm. is kind of one of the first bad decisions Claire made was doing this song because when I think of Claire I I think she excels doing goofy campy stuff and Believe is not a song you can really do that with in the critiques Helen asks well Claire have you seen the video and she says no "No." when she said no I was like oh bitch I hope you know your words because you will be in the bottom too Um, Mercury goes in on this look and I mean it was like harsh and I really like gasped when I heard her say not even my mom would wear that. But what I like about Mercury as a guest judge this episode is that she really came with her producer hat on because she really gives that kind of a stinger kind of feedback, but then follows up with a compliment. And I think that's really kind of how you should be giving the critiques. She then then moves on to say that Claire's makeup is exceptional. And I, I agree. Totally. Claire's mug is flawless 100% of the time her makeup looks amazing but yeah that performance was not Claire's best and yeah. it and it it kind of leaves us wondering who's going to be in the bottom sorry girl love you we move on to the next performer who is Leslie and I just want to say before we get into Leslie's number that I love seeing Leslie's confessionals before their performance because they're just so authentic and they're just so easygoing in these confessionals. It doesn't feel like 
they're putting on an act or anything. They're just talking to to us as if we were a friend. I love it. it yeah, it makes you smile. It it Leslie's, always puts, Leslie's just real all the time. I love Leslie. I I think it that he's such a light in the competition for the season and seeing the confessionals before their numbers always just like makes me feel like all warm and like ready to see the number. Yeah. With that being said, um, I mean, obviously the makeup uh, needed some work, Mm -hmm. but I think what had happened there was Leslie did plan makeup changes for every single episode. And they were like huge makeup changes. Yeah, no, like full wipe it away, put a whole new thing on and... I think by this point they had done so much makeup that there was just a lot of oils and chemicals and residue and debris on the face that trying to get this blue to just stay like matte and full coverage wasn't happening. Um, Mm -hmm. And I remember before the performance like this, it was stressful. I was stressed watching Leslie be stressed, Um, but I'm glad it didn't hinder the performance. Um, I thought the performance started off really strong. There was a lot of ideas there. You could tell Leslie had ran it and came up with specific moves for the number, which I can appreciate because I do feel like throughout the season, there have been some numbers we see that don't feel rehearsed. And this one definitely felt rehearsed, but I did lose some of the energy throughout the number. But I think at some point during the performance, there was a injury um, that occurred. So... Yeah, and um, Leslie's performance of Blue by Eiffel... Eiffel 65. Eiffel 65. I almost said 66. Um, I It, it kind of lends to my general critique for this episode where we all would have greatly benefited from editing our songs down. Like mm-hmm. shaving off a minute to two minutes would have helped everyone because mm-hmm. all of these songs on the playlist that we had to choose from are club songs so they're they're long and they they're they're repetitive so as a performer you kind of run out of things to play with for Mm -hmm. a four minute five minute song that's all chorus yeah um but lessie is a trooper pulling through we do get a little snippet after their number where the judges say you know we we heard you have an injury so lessie is in a chair receiving their critiques and i think that might be some foreshadowing who knows what that's going to be in future episodes i i also like that mercury was putting leslie on the spot saying what are the lyrics oh my god give it to me right now what and what did leslie say i'm blue i'm a dude i'm a guy i think i'm a dude i'm a guy i think so i mm, that's not what google says Mm. i also like that when uh katana is giving her feedback to leslie helen i feel like a lot of the judges forgot the cameras were on this challenge giving each other (laughs) full side eye writing each other notes on on post-its during this part of leslie's critique when uh katana is giving leslie the critique helen just looks at katana like she is angry she looks at her like she just found out who stole her unborn child or so- it oh go goodness. back and watch the episode and just watch the judges that is a whole different show i just want itself. a super cut of the judges making crazy faces and interacting with each other without speaking because that's <laughs> honestly been one of the best parts of the season it just cracked me up it's like they completely forgot <laughs> that those cameras well are and it's so funny because the judges panel is who's slick. editing this too <laughs> so i'm like are y'all forgetting to cut the parts off where you're like rolling your eyes and oh my God, not, not whispering under your breath not all that i don't think they care after leslie <laughs> we get brenda ova and in the confessional they're just being asked you know um what's your favorite song from the 90s and shout out to oops i did it again by britney spears always a banger free britney okay and i love that um in this confessional it actually helps out the number by prefacing saying that Brenda's going to go the night at the Roxbury route doing um, What is Love by Hathaway. And I think this is the best song for the challenge. When I think the Fired Up and I think Night at the Roxbury, What is Love is for sure the first song that comes to mind. So Brenda absolutely had the best song choice, in my opinion, for this episode. And she looked amazing. Yeah, she looked hot. And my note for Brenda is, well, it's not even really a note. It's just a comment is I feel like out of all the performers, she's the one coming back every week, taking the critiques from the previous challenge and actually applying them. And I even feel like with this podcast, the things we've kind of read her for are things that are improving. 
Um, for example, I felt like this performance was a lot more impactful. There was a lot more staccato motion and it, just moments where she paused and actually gave lip sync and face and gave a moment to the judges rather than just frolicking around the stage for the whole song. So it definitely felt like Brenda's most successful number so far. Brenda looked incredible. The song choice was great. I do feel like because the song was so repetitive and going in and out of different, the same verse and chorus over and over, some of the cues were missing. Um, but I honestly, that happened on almost everybody's numbers. So yeah. Sorry. And, I, and I said to, I wrote down, just watching the trailer for this episode, they like include this moment of Brenda's performance right as she's like unbuttoning her coat to reveal her dress. She's just like in this statuesque giving dynamic angle pose and it looks so good. I could watch that part over and over again. She just understands her body so well, knew what part of the song to do it in and it just was so sexy. She was giving me like full on 90s hooker in the in the club in LA with this look and performance. This is, in my opinion, one of the best. Mm-hmm. that I, And one of my favorite numbers I've seen from Brenda personally. Good job, girl. And then we move on to Shady B, the girl who made the episode. Yeah, this was, a lot happened. Yeah, iconicism, honestly. Um, this hair is fucking gorge. I love it. I want it. I mean, for a hard front. It's cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says that she is going to give us some comedy in this performance, and she definitely got a head start with that by doing Gorilla Glue on her wig mm. before this number. Yeah, that was definitely the funniest part of that number. Jake, um. <laughs> no, we're kidding. That was, I was on stage. I'm not that. joking, bitch. I don't think that was funny. I was on stage when it happened, and when I saw the Beyond the Drag Lens footage of it, I was like, I would have sought that bottle out of her hand. It honestly. was funny <laughs> in retrospect. Like oh obviously God. in the moment, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you putting We're and we're all literally sitting there offering you spirit gum and yeah. w- wig glue and track glue. Like there was options. We had bobby pins, we, uh, anything you needed. Honestly, bobby pins would have done. Sh- uh, Shady yeah. B has, what are you doing? Shady B down has a hard hair. Front. You don't need to glue down a hard front. Pin that shit. Yeah. She has hair underneath the wig. So she would have been, fine pinning this wig very well and i'm sure it would have survived the spins that she did for this number yeah i definitely think the gorilla glue was like a weird power trip type thing <laughs> like we told her not to do it and she was like well fuck you guys <laughs> i'm do it. gonna do it even more and put some more on <laughs> um <sighs> but so i think it was her just trying to really stick it to us but then it, well, it came back to bite her so uh, the song that she is doing is 100% Pure Love by Chris the Waters. Um, you know, she does start really fired up, which I'll give her props for, in this very ornate gown. Um, she, I, I thought this number was fun, honestly. Yeah, it was very fun. Um, there was a lot of ideas and nuances <laughs> and it was cute um i was very entertained the judges were not so much entertained um they kind of got on her about the repetitive nature of the number and the the going to the back to the front to the side whatever the spinning fucking lyrics spinning are. yeah spinning. whatever um i thought that was campy as fuck though like <laughs> that's camp doing it ag- i wish he had edited the song to literally only be that lyric for three minutes and spent the entire time on stage spinning around. I think that would have been 100% pure commitment Yeah, and amazing. But she didn't do that. But what she did give us was still campy. It was funny. I enjoyed it. If I saw this bitch in the club, I would have been laughing my head off. And she, <laughs> she was doing those spins a lot for this number. I know the quads were burnt. The quads were fired up. Actually, she oh was like, God. "I'm gonna give you some fired up with my muscles." Um, the I, I I get your perspective about like the campiness from it, but I think the same critique they gave me, where it wasn't like fully committed. Yes, it was. I see. It doesn't necessarily. On my first watch, I didn't necessarily read this as campy. And I think that's because I don't associate Shady B as a campy queen. Oh, what? Yes, absolutely. I don't think of Shady B as like a serious dancer queen. No, but she gives me, she gives me like full beauty gown. She's worn, she's given us gowns. Mm-hmm. 
for three episodes. Which Helen said, four stop. Episodes. <laughs> Helen said, please stop immediately. I, 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 I agree. I, I don't have any problem with their gowns. Her gowns are gorgeous, but I would have loved to have seen her in something a bodysuit. Something edgier, suit. Yeah. something a little more sleek and very club, very edgy. Same thing that I mentioned about Claire, about the call, the beckoning of the challenge kind of being lost, I think maybe applied here as well. I can see there was maybe a disconnect of what the what the critique was or what the challenge was asking for. Mm-hmm. And again, we I all, mean, I will say like the criteria for this challenge was definitely something that we all kind of looked at and were like, huh? Yeah. What? It was a hard challenge. Because there was just a lot of words in there. It was like, <laughs> give us club raver 90s club kid. And it was like, and only choose a song from this playlist. It's like, what? These are, that's really, there's a lot of adjectives it, that don't necessarily. And I said going into this challenge that this is the one that I was the most worried for. Just, and it's not anything I really have in my repertoire. And, you know, Helen did say to Shady B, you know, we have seen the gowns from you. I wish I would have seen you in something different. It kind of made me almost like even glad more glad that I didn't wear the gown that I originally wanted to wear because it, it's very apparent that they weren't wanting a gown for this number. They were wanting more sleek, edgy, Club. like body suits and yeah. sex, and more, you know, just more edgy kind of a look. Right. And a, the gown is gorgeous, but it's not necessarily what was being asked for this challenge. Yeah. And you see them get into that Katana and Shady B. Um, I mean, I thought they were going to fist fight. <laughs> there was some passion there. Between the two of them. It, it made for some great TV. Yes. Watching this episode, I was like, whoa. Lots of sexual tension. Mm. Mm. Katana B. Shady Ray. <laughs> Not Shady Ray. Um, yeah, so the, the back and forth between the judges and Shady B this episode is much more than what we see from other contestants. Mm-hmm. Um, I, oh, and then Shady B goes to say that we all suck and none of us are creative, but I mean, I did look like shit this episode, so whatever. We'll get to that in a bit, but I, I get it. You know, you, you, we're in this like pressure cooker type of environment emotions are running high and Shady B feels like she did well. And it's not that the performance was bad. It's just that it wasn't necessarily meeting what the challenge was asking for. And I think that's where the, the frustrations were coming from is that, Shady B saying, I did a good job, which she did, but the judges are saying it wasn't what we were looking for in this challenge. Yeah. And again, I'm going to give it to Mercury because after Katana and Shady B go back and forth for a while, Mercury jumps in saying, look, girl, we love you. It's great. We're just saying, you know, we're going by our our scorecard that we have here and we're just going off that. This isn't an, an attack on you by any means. We're just saying... This is our feedback and you can take it or you can leave it behind. That's totally fine. We're just, but we will send you home. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked when titty, titty B. <laughs> Shady B. <laughs> Tickle bitties. Titty B. I like when she smacked her titties and she did that in the promo too. I, I just love that. It's so good. It's the so milk stupid. Is here. <laughs> After Shady B is the artiste himself. Yeah, yeah. Next. I like the the sunglasses cover the paint, but I really love the eye paint this Ew, episode. No, it I was look good. bloated. And then I look like a corpse. And then gag. You're doing the same song that Leslie's doing. Yeah. Am I am I wrong here? Didn't you find that out the day of? Literally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a gag backstage. I mean, it was a gag, but I wasn't surprised. Helen loves her twists and turns. She's shady for that. Mm. She's a real shady bee. Um, Sh- Yaya was definitely the smartest one, this challenge. Oh, yeah. But- I chopped my song down from being like a four-minute song to a two-minute song because I knew waddling around that stage for four minutes doing the same verse over and over and over again was going to make me like f- throw me into fight or flight. Like By the end of that number, I would have done something desperate and... It fucked it all up and i knew let me just get on stage and get off stage because I, I don't have the brain power to make this entertaining for four minutes <laughs> and you know what you know what yaya wanted to mention on stage during the vintage episode yeah i did my hair and i did rosie's too and was riding that wave well in the feedback for yaya this episode taryn says are you wearing panties girl 
And Yaya says, yeah, I am. And Taryn's like, I love that. And this is actually my hand backstage because she was going to go out in just that pillowcase with nothing underneath. <gasps> and I was like, girl, pillowcase? you got to put some panties on. Me, When it comes to me and drag. Oh when, God. When, you, but you bought those from Amazon. You did not craft those I, and sew them. I, I designed and crafted your wig. I designed and chose which panties I was going to have in my bag. You're a nerd. Anyway, I'm just saying, you know, Yaya wants to take the credit from from me on the vintage. Yeah, and um, then you wore my costume this episode too, and I kept my mouth shut. Why are you bringing so. up old shit? We already talked about that. Uh-uh. We already talked about that. That has no Don't, bearing. The panties. <laughs> shut up. Anyway, you know, just Yaya being the smart one by trimming their song down by half and just getting on stage, doing what they needed to do, and getting, getting off stage was what needed to happen and it made it more enjoyable in my opinion yeah and then mercury reads me for my shit costume as she should yeah i okay literally it was not bad you're a monster babe that babe (laughs) shut the fuck up it was a pillowcase (laughs) so (laughs) literally shut the fuck up and I, it was a it was a cute look okay it was it was shut your mouth it, it was could, cute. it could have been a cute look it was an incomplete look let's That's be real where I'm going if you would let me get a word in yes I threw it together last minute I had that blue fabric sitting in my closet for three fucking years and I said okay I've got enough to cut this into a square and sew it together I did that then I glued some balls from a ball pit to it and spray painted them black and then I had like a half a yard of this latex fabric left. So I tried to make myself an ascot and did not realize that <laughs> it, the, was, the it was the bolt. end of the bolt and the bolt was sticking out. And yes, I looked a mess, but at least I had a concept and executed it decently <laughs> enough to be yeah. in the top of the challenge. So it. Y'all now, can hush. And you know what? Even though the look is incomplete, I can see what what it was going for. I'm just being a bitch, obviously. Um, and you know, this to me was definitely like that, like Euro raver, right? Look out totally. of all of them, I feel like if like when I watch Euro Chip, this guy is in the background scene in like the Amsterdam club or whatever. So I thought the look, even though like the crafty, the craftness of it wasn't complete. At least I crafted my shit. Y'all came in wearing rainbow forever 21 not, why are you looking at me from, i didn't i did not wear none of that i know you did not but don't look at me well actually no that's not fair people did craft their stuff yeah but don't be mean y- you got me pissed you're gonna get us slapped with another well, season desist oh my god whatever we're collecting them like candy now if you have a season desist please mail them in um yeah okay that's yeah that's enough of yeah whatever yeah, yeah. have I, that pillowcase on your body but then we go on to Arya Gunna. <laughs> so I love Arya Gunna. I love her. Um, I wrote, my first note says clunky. Um, I thought the costume reveals were really clunky. She knows that. <laughs> um, these Stockton bitches, man, they love their costume reveals. These Stockton girls just love to walk on stage with three costumes. And and I, okay, here's the thing. Everybody always says Yaya hates costume reveals, and it's not true. I like a costume reveal that is like engineered to be a reveal. Engineered. It, yes, engineered. It needs to be, mm-hmm. it, you need to be able to execute it on stage. And I, I felt like Aria did not give herself the insurance that this would go well. Because um, we see her right off the bat struggling to get out of this tunic robe thing. Um, and that really sets the tone for the whole thing. And I mean, I loved the concept for this number. I absolutely did. Y- you get the vibe that she's like going on a trip. She's mm-hmm. got her little her vacation look she takes it off and she's in this like sexy suit i thought this looked really cute and one of the notes i made was that she's wearing that like red wwe belt and traditionally i absolutely hate those and i want every drag queen who owns those to throw them in the garbage but in this context it worked because it looked like a cummerbund yeah no no you're you're definitely right uh, it like looked like a suit because suits have that. I almost said she looked like uh, Helen Heels when she had the red wig on in the suit. It was giving me Helen. She looked like Helen. I mean, she don't look like Helen, but I could see she Helen was, wearing She was this. giving Helen. Um, um, and then she she does the 
oh and then she takes the pants off i forgot that that didn't need to happen uh, um yeah and then the wig comes off and that was like the best part of the whole number because then she's giving the six flags like late 90s early 2000s mm-hmm. promo which is iconic so like i said i absolutely loved the concept of this number but the execution did fall a little short sorry queen yeah and you know it is vinga boys Ooh, wow. vinga boy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk this I can't. episode i'm sorry so it's vinga boys we like to party <laughs> i did not do it again. <laughs> say it again <laughs> <laughs> stop Ving- <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do it <laughs> no. We'll say it together. One, two, three. Venga boys. boys. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dumbest tangent. Let me finish. So it's that song that was used for the Six Flags <laughs> commercials. <laughs> and um I, I like the concept that she had, but her coming out in like the like the vacation look first, but then immediately taking it off. Immediately. She, that song started and she said, buy tunic, yeah. buy straw hat. Yeah. That <laughs> kind of left the bad. T- <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> you said straw hat. <laughs> so she takes that off right away. <laughs> Sickening straw hat. So it's over. Tune in next week. <laughs> I can't recover from this. <laughs> Good job, girl. <Chris. laughs> then we go into it right now. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <sighs> so we got reveals on top of reveals, mm-hmm. and it. it they malfunction one after another and it they don't work out. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. Okay, so should I just not comment? <laughs> Let's move on. Oh my god. After Aria, we do get Miss Elena Roberts in. I actually like this hair a lot. That like wet crimp look I think was very nineties, two thousands. Oh totally. That yeah, was it was that giving, was the right hair call for sure. It was giving Eliza Thornberry. Oh, but so that ginger. So that, yeah, uh, asshole by ginger. Oh, it, it was giving her too. Yeah, hey girl. Uh, so she's doing "Stranger in My House." <gasps> Gag, another Deborah Cox song. Mm. As told by Stranger. Uh, the edit, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> the edit for this number, like with the that was the camera work <laughs> with the camera work was really good. I was nervous watching this number. I look, it looked like Elena was devouring the song. I got scared. Like in what sense? Like she was killing it for me. Oh, okay. And we're getting a little two piece action in the look and um with the WWE belt in the middle. Yeah. Girls. Oh these belts gotta go. Oh no. I'm sorry. Oh no. Unless you're wearing it as a cummerbund for your tuxedo, <laughs> it's gotta go. Arya said I the do standard. but I do I do really like this Elena look. I do. I like the hoodie moment. It's rave. I like the fabric. Yes, it's very rave. Um I just wish the belt was something more interesting. And you know what I liked about Elena in this challenge? I think um, I think the Stockton girls have more experience doing these kinds of songs. Like I feel like I can see Elena doing this more so than me doing. It's very up her alley yeah. already. Yeah. And so when, when she came out and started her performance, it looked very like that one girl in the club saying like, all right, clear the floor. This is my mm-hmm. jam. It. She looked like she was. She looked sh- great. She looked like she was shutting it down. And I then, was. I was into it. And then she does this lace front to lace front wig reveal, and that's not an easy execution because a lot that of the times hard. when we see wig reveals, it's a hard front with bangs to a lace front, or a hard front with bangs to a chop with bangs. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this uh, to execute a lace front to lace front, and to not have it be clockable because I, I didn't did not see, see it that coming. coming. It was not at all. Re- it was executed really well. And I know she was cooking on stage with two wigs on her head like that mm-hmm. props to you girl that was it it was good and then she started spinning and it, it was giving me leslie jordan like daddy daddy watch me twirl <laughs> i <laughs> you know elena fully pissed on the floor i 
I think this was her challenge. Go TBH. piss girl. Yeah. It was um, successful. And But then the judges like kind of read her. In. And I'm just, uh, Elena's whole run this season has been I can't predict so it. so weird to me because the times I feel disappointed, the judges eat it up. And then the times I'm like, yes, bitch, you killed it. The judges are like, meh. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I'm just not on the same page as the judges, which is fine. They're like, you should have done like Mez. It. <laughs> no one do lay miss please we like when you do musical theater girl mm. uh, yeah but the again the judges ripped into everyone this yeah, episode nobody got it, it easy. weird um but i i like that because when it got to scorecards i wasn't able to predict where anybody was really going to land totally and, and the scorecard cemented that because i was so off with we my were placement. all shocked it was good so in first place we have rosalie valentine <gasps> Me with the double win. Oh, we'd love to see it. Two wins so far. Yeah. Well, Tilly Creams won lots of challenges on her season. And we all saw how that ended for her. So <gasps> don't get too comfortable. Bum, bum, bum. And then in second place, we have Yaya. Which I disagreed. I literally thought my performance was sleepy and not energetic. I agree. I lo- Shut the <laughs> fuck up. I literally looked awful. But I'm also so mean to myself. So maybe I did better than I'm really giving myself credit for. But well, I, I was shocked to see myself in second. I was thinking I was going to land in like fifth, sixth. No, no. I, I truly knew you were going to be top three for this challenge. Um, the gag was that we were actually one point away. I was at 89 points. You were at 88 points. And it's because my shit wasn't hand. If your look had been complete, you would have fully taken the win. Yeah, I should have just let you wear that gown. Yeah, you should have. That's what... Being nice I gotta stop you. helping Rosalia Valentine. Yeah, go back to helping Rose and other people. <gasps> you clearly know how to do that game better. Don't joke about that. In third place, we have <gasps> Brenda Ova with Obsessed. 77. I love that she got third place. It Team was strap in the top three. Just it was it feels correct right. placement. Brenda was so good this episode. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm glad to see her in the top three for sure. And to be completely honest, because next up in the placement, we have Elena I think I was switching gagged. me and Elena would have made no, more sense. No, I think switching... Well, I think if it were me, I'd put Yaya first. Or what? Be, or even Elena. For, I didn't see myself in the top I thought three Elena was going to win watching the number. I, Hearing I, the judges' same. critiques, I, I didn't think she was well, going to win. If I were a judge, I, I thought... I would have critiqued that well. I would have put Elena in the top three for same. sure. I thought it was a good number. Over me or you. Brenda deserves yeah, her spot Brenda, in the top three. Yeah. I feel like you and me, you more so than me deserve top three or did wait shit no did did not deserve deserve yeah no i i I can agree with that i can agree with that um in fifth place we have aria gunna with 71 points i was a little surprised i was gagged there was a lot of technical difficulties i i thought that would result in her being closer to the bottom but i think her having such a strong concept and vision for this number pulled through I didn't get away in too much on Arya's performance, but I think you said plenty. No, I did not. I was trying to say plenty. I think if she would have simplified or yeah, simplified her gimmicks a bit more to give a cleaner performance, it would have warranted fifth place. But because of how much she planned and how much she kind of missed the mark, I don't think fifth place is where I would have put her. Yeah. Yeah. And then in sixth place, we have Leslie with 64 points. Um, I, y- yeah. I can't I can, argue. I can't argue with yeah. that. It wasn't the best number. It wasn't the worst number. So sixth place feels about right. Yeah. And then bottom two, we have Shady B and Claire. Seventh place will be safe and eighth place will be eliminated. This one was stressful watching because mm-hmm. I was at a show watching off Helen's phone because Helen was in it. Claire was in it. Elena was in it. I was in it. And so we were all watching backstage, like holding each other's hands, like, Oh my God, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And when we saw that seventh place was Claire, AKA safe, we all just were like, Oh, that was intense. Totally. Meaning of course, that shady B is the eliminated queen this episode. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't, disagree with the decision but i think this episode could have got gone a lot of ways yeah Um, it it was a yeah i mean i understand it and i can't argue it and i think 
at the end of the day, it came down to concepts and effort. And I mean, obviously, Shady B put so much effort into this look, but I don't think the same amount of effort was put into crafting the number as a whole. Um, mm. So I think that was ultimately what her demise was. So, And that's the thing with this competition is you can be killing it one week, but if you just slightly miss the mark enough the next week, you know, that could be your ticket home. Yeah. So uh, let that be a lesson to all the other competitors. Um, don't get too comfortable where you're at. Well, I was also gagged because on episode two, my story, we were told by the judges at some point there will be a double elimination this Oh yeah, this season. Yeah, and I'm gag be- going. I thought this. Could I have thought been this it. was gonna be the episode we before even wa- it. before watching the episode. I had cemented in my head. Oh, fired up will be the double elimination episode, just because of how much we all struggled with it. Yeah, I'm very gagged that it wasn't, and mm-hmm. now I'm even more excited for the future episodes because I don't. There's know. gonna be a double elimination somewhere where it's not expected now because. You know, I don't want to divulge into future episodes, but this was the episode I thought it was going to happen. And I'm glad that Claire is safe to fight another day. But I'm also now even more worried because a double elimination in the future means that even if you weren't the worst, you can still be sent home. So yeah, so it'll be interesting to see when that happens. Got to keep an eye out for Selena. Mm-hmm. So don't get too comfortable. We'll be back next week to dish on episode five. And just a thank you again to our sponsor, Dr. Dennis Gross, Work.com, Chiffon Dior, Helen Heels, and everybody else involved in the production and crew of Into the Draglands. And you, our amazing, devoted fans. We love you. And don't forget to watch Into the Draglands, all new episodes on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Work.com's YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Bye. Out of the Draglands.